Hey, this is Madeline Sklar. And Suze Cooper, and you're listening to All Things Audio. Let's dive straight in. And um, we've actually heard from Michael de Groot uh, this week again. Absolutely love the fact that Michael is one of our avid replay listeners. So um, we've got a whole crowd of people that join us every single week in the Space Live, which we absolutely love. We've got a great load of people that are subscribing to the podcast every week, which is amazing. But we also have a little community of people that love listening to the replay here on Twitter. And Michael is one of those people. We spoke about him a few weeks ago because he does these amazing sketch notes and mind maps out the things that we're talking about, which is not only useful for us, but hopefully useful for other people as well. Um, but yeah, he's he's posed a question to us, Madeline, um, around the replays. And what he's asking, he says, I notice on Clubhouse you can save replays to your own profile. Super handy. I assume we don't have that facility in Twitter spaces as yet. Do you recommend, as discussed last week, to add it to moments? So, um, yeah, I, what, what he's referring to here, basically, you have been able to save your replays on Clubhouse since the end of last year, I think. And what that does is, is essentially creates your own little archive of um, rooms that you can go back and listen to at a later date when it's better for you to to sit and listen to them when you've got the time. A lot like you might save an episode of a podcast in a podcast player. Um, So he's right. We don't have that facility here on Twitter Spaces. Um, Madeline, is it something we'd like to see? Would you like to see it? Absolutely, I would like to see that, for sure. Yeah, I think it can only be a yes. And actually, one of the things that has gone quiet is the whole Twitter and podcasts thing that we were really excited about this time a couple of months ago, maybe. Um, And we did discuss last week how things, you know, are probably going to slow down a little bit in Twitter land for a bit while they work out what's happening with Elon Musk and and all the rest of it. Um, But potentially, I feel like this is something that's going to come along once they announce what they're going to be doing with podcasts, don't you think? I think so. I mean, it just seems like it would make sense for them to have that available to us. So I'm hoping, I mean, there's been some hints, but you're right. Right now, things are kind of in a holding pattern with the whole Elon Musk buying Twitter and them not wanting to put out any new features at the moment throughout Twitter. So we're just in a wait and see holding pattern right now. Um, But I, I think it's coming. I do. But there's some third party tools that have been providing services where it has a place for all of your replays to to sit and uh, the ability for us to share that. You know, we have uh, Andrew's Spaces dashboard, which is pretty cool. Is that still in beta, though? Do you know? Yeah, I think so. I think he's still kind of testing. He seems to be adding different functionality every so often um, and working with kind of individuals to work out what different people would like. Um, but yeah, as far as I know, that's kind of not live and out in the world as yet. But you're right. Yeah, that is something I think that's that's available through there. Yeah. And I also see in the room right now live with us is Shai Damir. I hope I'm saying her name right from FlowGen. And, you know, they've been working on a really cool tool to allow you to be able to have all the replays together. And uh, she just invited me to go uh, play around with it today. And I, I only had time to do it for a few minutes, but it's looking really cool. And that looks like a way to send people. And, and we know that Hoseline ha, has had had access to it. We've seen it from the screenshots promoting this. Um, so it looks like a really interesting way. And I'm sure we'll be talking about it a lot more in the coming weeks as you and I start playing around with it. Yeah, absolutely. I'm looking forward to diving into that one as well, having having seen the invite earlier today. So yeah, definitely one to watch. Um, but Michael's right. It's not something that's available in Twitter yet. It's definitely something we'd like to see. As ever, because it's not available in Twitter, we like to think our way around these things, don't we, Matt? We sure do. We sure do. How can people make use of the features and functions that are on Twitter to do this kind of thing? And yes, um, last week or the week before, I was talking about how you can save those spaces cards into a Twitter moment, a lot like the moment that you put together, Madeline, um, for the links that we use in our nest. Uh, That is one way of doing it. Another way is bookmarking. I mean, bookmarking is fine, but it doesn't keep them all together. Whereas if you did a Twitter moment that you called something like my spaces or something like that, um, you could then add the URL into that Twitter moment as you come across them. And then you would effectively have your own playlist, obviously on the understanding that after 30 days, if you haven't listened to that space, you're going to lose access to that 
replay. But yeah, that is kind of a bit of a a bit of a clunky workaround, but that would be a workaround for it at the moment, I think. Absolutely. And I, I'm just now tweeting out, I'm going to put in the nest, uh, your Twitter moments that you put together that you were just talking about showing the last 30 days of replays. And that was such a smart idea. Uh, what a great workaround for the time being. So I thought that was really, really smart the way you did that. So I just put in the nest. We'll also have it uh, in the show notes for those listening to the podcast version. Um, there are definitely ways around it, but it'll be so much nicer when Twitter actually um, integrates this right into the platform itself. Yeah, and it would be great to hear from Andrew or, or Shida if you're still um, here as we open up the mics later on and, and hear from you about your your thoughts and your your different platforms that you're you're working on to bring this sort of functionality um, to us lot that are using spaces a lot. Exactly. And then Michael did a really interesting tweet earlier today, a few hours back, that you all were going back and forth um, inquiring about that spaces tab and uh, some issues with, with finding rooms on there. Um, so you, you and he were like kind of doing this nice little exchange back and forth that was kind of going all the way up until we were just about ready to start. You want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, sure. I mentioned this a few weeks ago, how, you know, under the spaces tab, different people are seeing different things. So they're obviously the, the product team are trying to work out what the best way is of, uh, creating that spaces tab so that it's useful for people. There's definitely options that are available to some people where it shows that you can filter through the spaces that are available. Um, and in some cases, those filter buttons are available straight from the off when you go into the tab. In other places, they're not available straight from the off and you have to kind of find them. And there's even a whole different design of, of card um, and a whole new look to the spaces tab, which I've definitely not experienced. Um, so... Michael was basically saying that he couldn't see the filter buttons of top, live and upcoming within the spaces tab until he'd actually run a search. And that is that is the version that I've got and the version that I have always had. And it it emerges and Sajad has actually waded, waded in on the thread and, and been great. He says there are three discoverability experiences in the spaces tab. And from the screenshots that I've shared of, of what I can see, it looks like I have the third, he says, and rarest one. Now, I would suggest that mine is the third and rarest one because it's actually completely useless. I find it so frustrating. I, I can't use those filters at all without having run a search first. And there's kind of no point in me running a search unless I know what I'm looking for, which means it doesn't really filter anything for me. Um, so I do find it very annoying. I'm hoping that it is really just Twitter trying to work out which of these three variants is working for people, what's not working for people. Clearly, this isn't working for me. Um, and eventually we will see one version of it that is rolled out across the board. So, yeah, I'm sure it's them testing and trying different things out. The conversation is still going on now. Sajad's literally just replied to me again, um, and I, I can't, I can't talk and digest, process what he's written. But still, <laughs> it's still going on. Please do join in. Let me know what you see under the Spaces tab um, and whether or not it's working for you. Um, in fact, it feeds quite nicely into the next tweet that we wanted to share with you today, which is from Evan, who is a project manager on the Spaces team, who is asking people for their um, experiences of the Spaces tab, asking, why do you visit the tab? Are you listening to spaces on your commute? Um, you know, how are you using this tab and how can we make it better for you? So I will definitely be adding my thoughts to that thread, but do come along and, and join the other thread that we've been talking about as well. And Madeline, I mean, I think you've got, I think you've got the better version than me. You've got the I have a different one. I have a, that's, that's what's so interesting. Yeah. I am quite surprised that Twitter has different versions of this spaces tab that people are like I've had it from the very beginning so I've had this for a very very long time and what you guys have been showing those are like old versions I've had where I have the newer version and I know Hoseline has done screenshots of this and mine looks just like his where when I go to and this is just when you're on mobile at the bottom you should see a little microphone icon if you have that that's how you know you have some version of this 
spaces tab for discoverability. Now, when I tap on that, I see at the top happening now, and that's what's lit up. So I can just scroll through and see different rooms happening now. And next to it, it has coming up. So I can see those are scheduled. And next to that is recorded. And that's fairly new where it's showing you rooms that have already been recorded in the last 30 days. So it says, catch up on these spaces, blast from the past 30 days. Now, I have to say, Suze, when I go through this, very little is stuff I'm interested in. It, they still have not really harnessed the power of utilizing the topics feature and um, just the best discoverability we think we, we should have by now uh, with the algorithm. But at the very top, it does say search for a space. So if I'm looking for one of my hosted rooms, I'm looking for this room because you you initiate this room, you set it up as the host. I have to, I just type in your name. It's that simple. I can just type in Suze Cooper and I'll find it. Or you can type in all things audio, you know, something that you know is in the title. Because I have an unusual name, if you just type in Madeline, all you have to do is put M-A-D-A-L-Y-N. Anything that I'm a part of that's scheduled, you will find it and it'll pop right up uh, in the search. And I believe all the versions of the Spaces tab does have a search now. So everyone that has the ability to go into the tab should be able to do a search at the top. And at least you can go and find rooms just by doing, you know, your own keywords or the name of a host. And that'll get you, or, or if they're the name of the host or if they're in the title. And because you put me in the title, that's why when you put in Madeline in a search, I would show up on your room that you've scheduled. I guess what they're doing is they're testing in these small groups. It's just surprising to me that they have these different versions. I didn't, until you guys were talking about this and showing your screenshots in those tweets, I was like, wait a minute, mine is totally different. I used to have mine looking like yours. And that was, you know, it's so funny with these different versions because when this tab first came out and I had the early access, it was terrible. It was really, really bad. And I talked about that quite a bit, that they got a lot of work to do. So it's interesting that they keep having these different iterations but I'm just surprised that they just don't group us all together. Like, what's the point of having you on an older version when they rather have uh, your thoughts on the most current version they're working on? Because they do keep improving it. Right. The next one. Madeline, you found this awesome tweet about a sponsored space. Tell us more about what you found and what you think. Yeah, this this was an interesting tweet. Um, and I just put it in here so you guys can see the screenshot. Uh, is the, the tweet says, first time I've seen a sponsored space. And it's a tweet for a room um, for the NFL draft. So that was pretty recent. And so it was the NFL. It was the NFL and one of the Twitter accounts. Uh, I'm not sure which Twitter account that is from the screenshot. Um, but it looked like a very large room with lots of people. And in the nest was an advertisement for Chevy trucks. So I thought that's interesting. So, so really cool that this lady noticed this, screenshotted it and tweeted it, tweeted it out to say, hey, this is obviously a sponsored space. And I think we're going to start seeing more sponsored spaces. Actually, I've put on um, a couple of my regular Twitter space. It wasn't this one, but my, my, my ones there geared for Twitter, you know, my Twitter Smarter and my Twitter Audits that was actually sponsored by Ahrefs, which is an SEO tool. And they had come to me earlier this year and wanted to sponsor some different things that I was doing. And they were very interested in my Twitter Smarter chat. And I talked to them about how, in addition to the chat, I also do the Twitter spaces. And while I was at it, I was like, well, here are the other spaces, all things audio and uh, Twitter Audits. And they're like, you know, we would like to sponsor not only your Twitter chat, but these interesting spaces you're doing that are also related to Twitter marketing. So unfortunately, they weren't interested in sponsoring this room. But is I'm, I think this is very early stages, but I, I think more and more companies are going to start sponsoring rooms and spaces. Look at podcasts. I can remember the very early days of advertisers on podcasts, and it was very small companies. It wasn't the big, large companies. It was like small businesses wanting to take a chance. And I was like, oh, this is going to be cool. It'll be interesting when the big brands start doing it. And now when you listen to any big podcaster uh, show, you're going to hear at the beginning like ads for all these big, co I was just listening to Pat Flynn's and his started out with an ad for Indeed, uh, which is um, for, for job seekers. And it's so interesting to see that progression over all these many, many years of podcasting because you and I have been in the podcast world for a very long time. And it's 
great to see that it's gotten to a place now where advertising is a very big thing. And because Spaces and social audio is, is newer with Clubhouse and Spaces and the other platforms, I think it's going to take time. But but this really shows like here's a big brand, the NFL, doing a room in Spaces for the NFL draft. And here's a very large brand, Chevy Trucks, that is sponsoring this. So I think we're just early days on this, but it's really interesting to see, like, I think this is the start. We're, I think we're going to start seeing a wave of this. And I think the way we'll know that they're sponsored in this particular room, they put by Chevy trucks in parentheses. Now, mind you, in spaces, we're very limited with the character spaces for the, the, the room name. And they were able to fit. I mean, it's very interesting when you look at this. They were able to fit. It was the night before the 2022 NFL draft and hashtag NFL draft. But they made room to put in parentheses by Chevy trucks. And then this particular screenshot, she made sure the screenshot showed in the nest. The Although it just showed the one, it was only one item in the nest. That might have been the only thing they put in the nest. We don't know. We don't know because in the screenshot, we don't know if this was just the beginning or, if, you know, so interesting that. Now, what I what I did when I was hosting my my rooms and spaces that was sponsored from HRFs, uh, I put together all these tweets ahead of time, specifically for the nest, and I made sure because we know when a room ends and people go to the replay, the nest is intact. It's going to always show. And there's something to keep in mind for everybody here that hosts a room. It's going to always show your last tweet in the nest. I don't understand why it's not the other way around. It's just, it should go from the beginning to the end instead of end to the beginning. I make sure that if it's whatever's most important needs to be the very first tweet in the nest and the very last tweet in the nest. So when I had the sponsored room, I made sure the very first tweet. So when people came in, they saw, you know, that this was a sponsored, you know, sponsored by a nice little promotion for that sponsor. And then at the end, I, I made sure Somewhere at the very end that I got that last, I was always trying to make sure if I was putting other things in the nest that I, I, I did not forget to put the very last one for the sponsor because what a great extra bonus for them that you can show them that when this room is on replay, that's the first thing people are going to see in the nest. So I just made sure it was a thank you to HRFs type of tweet. Um, and so just, I thought that really looked good. Now for, for the room we're doing here, you know, Currently, it's not a sponsored room, but if you'd like to talk to us about sponsorship, reach out to Susan and I. We would love to talk to you. But I make sure the very first tweet here each week is the about this room tweet. Uh, and and Susan, you're always so great about talking about this room. You know that we're recording this, that we spend the first half uh, with everybody in a listen-in mode because we're recording this for the podcast and then we'll take mic requests. I think that makes for a really great first tweet for this room. But I've gotten into this new habit making sure that when this room ends, um, I'm trying to get this habit of putting a tweet up that I, I just started doing a few weeks ago where I say, and I've already tweeted it, so I have it ready. And I actually already put it in the nest. Um, it's the sec, uh, well, it's one of these tweets. Uh, the second tweet, yeah, where it says, get your fix of all things audio. Uh, it's, a, it's a tweet about the podcast version of this. I want to make sure people know that we do have this as a podcast and new episodes are released every Friday. And so I made that the second tweet, but I'm going to make sure at the end, I try to get it in there before the room closes, because that'll be the first thing people see when they hit replay. And maybe we get someone new and they don't even realize that this is also a podcast. And if they love to listen to podcasts and they're not here live, maybe they just want to go listen to the podcast and subscribe each week for, for the episodes. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's um it's interesting the different areas that you can potentially highlight the sponsorship as well. As you say, you know, there's the real estate of the the title, which only gives us very limited um character count there. I'd argue that this Chevy Trucks one potentially that could have they could have added the account so that it actually would go through if someone hit Chevy Trucks um straight to their account that you know potentially. But you then you've got the nest you know, it's, there's lots of different areas. There's reads. I mean, I've certainly been in spaces and been involved in spaces that are sponsored where the host is mentioning the sponsor at the beginning and the end. Um, 
But yeah, it's, it's super interesting. I'm also really interested in Morgan's response to this particular Chevy Trucks tweet, which was that the speaker followings total around 45 million people, it says, um, for, for this space. And I know that Morgan will have gone along and checked that out. Um, and he's he's kind of asking the question, would you say that 10,000 listeners is sponsorship well spent? I mean, they're, they're big numbers. <laughs> We've spoken about the big number spaces in the last couple of weeks. Um, but that's that's interesting, too. You know, there's there's no reply to that. Um, but I, I like, you know, I like the fact that that's it's very difficult. The whole return on investment, brand awareness, all of those kind of KPIs are so difficult to, to kind of nut out, aren't they? But um Asking the question kind of does get you to think. Well, okay, what would be what would be good, you know, sponsorship money well spent in this particular arena? But yeah, great to to see people thinking about it. I wonder if we'll see more sponsored audio events on LinkedIn if that continues to take off. Just because people are in that kind of corporate frame of mind, perhaps on that platform. Exactly, that's my thinking because it's more of a business platform. I, I think we will start seeing that over there. And I think once, once I almost feel like they will probably overtake whatever is happening over here or even on Clubhouse. And then there'll be a bit of kind of, oh, OK, that's how we can do it. And, and it will kind of filter back through. Um, I mean, we've not heard much from LinkedIn audio events in the last few weeks, uh, certainly since kind of before Easter, really. Um, so, I, you know, as far as I know, that's all still in beta, all still with a very, very tight test community um, there and that they're still not kind of giving very much away as to the the future of it. Um, I really hope it does blossom and flourish and become something though, because I think this, you know, as I say, this I think is where we'll see those kind of monetization, sponsorship deals, all of that kind of thing really taking off over there. Yeah, I agree. Definitely. So the next article that we've come across is actually around um, Twitter suspending accounts that are using a viral spaces link to promote their tweets. Now, this is something that we did talk about probably a few months ago now, Mad. We did. It was recent. Yeah, there was a weekend, wasn't there, where suddenly there was this moment where people on Twitter had thought they'd found this massive hack for going viral whereby if you put a spaces link into a tweet, it would get further reach, more impressions, um, and people were actually sending their tweets viral. Now, this is from thebrag.com, um, and this particular um, article is saying that Twitter's actually been seeking out those accounts that were testing out this viral magic um, and actually suspending them. So for anyone who did manage to go viral by adding a Spaces link into their tweet, it would appear that they may now have lost access to their account and getting that back is never an easy task. Um, but yeah, I think Madeline, at the time we spoke about how how come adding a Spaces link to a tweet that has nothing to do with the space would make it go viral when so many of us content creators on Spaces are finding it so hard to be discovered? <laughs> Exactly. Well, I think the reason why, and if you go to this article, there are some tweets they show in here. A lot of these were like silly memes. And I really think it was the meme that grabbed the attention. And then people see this link and you don't see the full link. You just see twitter.com slash spaces slash blah, blah, blah. And people are probably just like, well, let's click it and see where this takes. It must be related. So let's click it. And so then this magic happened where these these rooms were so viral. Um, I think it's a little harsh for them to just be suspending people because some people might have just been testing to see like what would happen if I did this. Um, I don't know how long this went, how far people took it, but I did find it interesting that they decided to suspend accounts over it. Um, you know, why don't, why don't you just fix it somehow so that you don't, you know, it doesn't, the algorithm does not cause that to happen, but maybe there's not a way for them to do that. I don't know. Yeah, I think I think potentially it was a victim of its own story, if you see what I mean. Once people were yep. saying, oh, have you seen that this happens when you do this? Right. Lots of people were kind of going, oh, look, there's one of those tweets. Oh, I'll just retweet that and say, oh, look, I fell. And actually that just snowballed. Um, I feel like that was that was what might have happened. But yeah, it does seem pretty harsh, especially considering you know, the, the road back to getting your account reinstated sounds like a very long, arduous and sometimes quite fruitless one, to be honest. So it's quite quite a harsh action if that is what they're doing. 
I, I figured like a warning would have been more suitable. I like, just to scare people from doing it again. But yeah, a little harsh. Don't know how long accounts were suspended. Probably just something like 24 hours, I would imagine. I, I cannot imagine them shutting down indefinitely over, over something like that. Um, unless they got crazy with it and just kept doing it repeatedly. Um, but it, it definitely makes for an interesting story. I, when we talked about this recently, it didn't cause me to go run out and do it. Um, because what's the point? Why, why would I sit here and mislead people? Cause that's what it was. It was misleading. And I mean, on one hand, I can see why Twitter would suspend like, Hey, you do misleading things. It is in the terms of service, you know, um, the do's and don'ts. Um, it just felt a little extreme for a suspension without a warning. But Twitter also has a history of doing things like that with no warning. Yeah. Yeah, abs absolutely. And it's, you know, yeah, I, I just feel like fix that, fix the problem, as you say, fix the problem, move on and then make it so that people are going wild over our actual spaces. That would be great. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Now we can talk about Stephanie Simon because you found I, it's so interesting that you added this tweet for us to talk about because I saw it out in the wild myself. I, I saw this tweet and I thought, well, that's really interesting, um, but definitely worth talking about because it, it is uh, an interesting thread. Yeah. So Stephanie Simon um, was head of community and creators at Clubhouse. Um, and her tweet is it literally says leaving quietly with the emoji peace sign, a love letter to the Clubhouse community. And I saw it and I just thought, no, she can't be leaving quietly. She's Stephanie. She's Steph. She's she's one of the, the key people that I remember, you know, the, the early town halls um, listening to, you know, talking about the platform. But no, reading through her, her threaded tweet, she is indeed leaving for um, a new adventure to set up her own her own thing. And um, yeah, I think I think Clubhouse are going to miss her, Madeline. I do. Oh, yeah, I think so. I tell you what, though, there was one tweet in this thread I'm going to put in the nest that was very moving to me um, is the second to last tweet in the thread. And she says some learnings for this next chapter. And, and this piece right here is so valuable for everyone when it comes to marketing yourself on social media, building community, because she really says exactly what this is all about. She says the people are the product. The magic is in the alchemy of the people. And to cast the spell of community, people need to feel that they are part of something. Know that they are seen and that they belong, even if among strangers. Whoa, that was powerful. That, that was just an amazing tweet that she put out. So I really wanted to highlight that because that, that's what community is all about. And then we got one last thing to talk about, and then we'll take the mic request. Uh, you found, and I've seen, I was seeing tweets about this last week uh but you you found a really great tweet for us to share which i'm going to put in the nest right now i loved how they start off with saying scoop in all caps because this really is a scoop that facebook is removing all podcasts from the platform on june 3rd what the heck i thought they were going all in on podcasts and, and audio so what's going on with them yeah yeah i mean april 2021 i have up in front of me from the meta newsroom be heard bringing social audio experiences to Facebook. And there's this, you know, full length blog about all the different ways that they're going to be plugging into audio, the, you know, the rise of audio on um, audio calls, audio messages on WhatsApp and Messenger, sound effects, sound bites, um, bringing podcasts to the platform, live audio rooms, and now apparently pulling the plug on the lot of it, which I just... I wonder why. <sighs> Well, I I don't know. I mean, I'm, it never got further than the US, so I never got to kind of try it out. <laughs> um, we always discussed the fact that the live audio rooms really just felt like something that groups would use and actually live streaming. It was just like live streaming, but turning off the video, which this doesn't feel like that, whereas I feel like on Facebook, potentially it does. Um, I don't know. I mean, audio is most certainly booming for like gen z maybe they're finding that actually on the platform their audience their older audience isn't as into audio as they thought but i i don't know i just i feel like to pull everything and they've obviously spent some time working on it seems a little bit short-sighted when 
everywhere else at the moment is, you know, we're all talking about the rise of audio. This is the golden age of audio. This is all about, you know, storytelling, talking, listening. Um, I don't know. I don't get it. What do you think? Uh, Well, here's what's interesting. Here's my observation. Now, I don't think to go to Facebook to listen to podcasts. It just is just something I don't think if I want to listen to a podcast, I go to my podcast player. Or I just go do a Google search and look for something. I'm not, I'm not going to Facebook looking for it. But here's what's interesting. There are podcasts of people th- that I follow that have podcasts and it'll show up in my notifications. So sometimes it becomes a reminder like, oh, yeah, I forgot they, they got their podcast. And, and like, it was a, almost like a little mini reminder seeing a notification in, in Facebook to remind me about a podcast of someone that I follow or like. So, you know, interesting so in a way, it had a job for you. It did. It was kind of doing some little bit of a reminder for certain people that's like, oh, OK, they have a new episode out. OK, because because the thing is, I don't there's lots of podcasts that I that I like, but I don't want to subscribe to everything because then it's just too much every day. And, and a lot of the ones I listen to are daily or, or multiple times a week. And I use Overcast because uh, last year the Apple podcast app, you know, it seems like every so many years when they overhaul the Apple podcast app, it's either going to be really, really good or really, really bad. And I've had times where it was great and I love it. And then it it gets really bad and I got to switch players because I just can't handle it. And I'll go back and forth. I always go to Overcast whenever to me, if I don't like the latest version of Apple Podcasts, and I'll use Overcast. And so um, when they made all those changes last year around the time when the subscription thing was starting, I just didn't like the player and it just didn't work for me. So I just switched to Overcast, went back to Overcast, actually paid this time because uh, for the paid account, you get it's really inexpensive and you get some extra features, which I like. But I just don't want to be overwhelmed. There, there are certain ones that I do subscribe to. But what I like about Overcast is if you just download one episode of something, you don't have to, that doesn't mean you automatically subscribe. And then it stays in a section on there um, called, let me pull this up so I can tell you what, they have these different sections. You have an unplayed section and active. So active will be my active subscriptions. So they'll just show up automatically. And then archive. And I love this. So if I, so let's say I come across a podcast, I just want to listen to it one time. I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. If I just keep it, if I don't like delete it completely out, It'll stay in this archive section. And what I do a lot is I'll just go through the archives to see the regular podcast that I may like, but I just don't want every episode. I can just click on it and see what's their latest episode. Maybe I want to download that one episode. Uh, you know, some episodes I like, but not all of them. And so it kind of allows me to pick and choose. And I love that. So, uh, but otherwise I just get too overwhelmed. But the point of it with the whole Facebook notification is there is a daily podcast. I was getting them every day. It became too much. And because it's daily, some of the information I already know about, because he's already talked about it multiple times, maybe it's geared more for the new listeners. So I changed it so I can just manually pick the episodes I want to listen to in the archive. But when I see it show up in a notification on Facebook, it's, sometimes it's like, oh, okay, he has a new episode out. Maybe I should go look on my Overcast app to see what his new episode, and maybe I want to download it. So that was, that was kind of working for me in this odd way, <laughs> this roundabout kind of way, the way they had that at Facebook. But not in the sense. way that they probably wanted you, because exactly. they want to keep you on the platform. So exactly. if you're not exactly. listening on there or staying within the, the kind of meta environment, then it's not doing what it needs to be doing in terms of Facebook's stats and figures and, and getting engagement there. I mean, we've said before, like, it's, it, it's not, audio isn't something for, for every platform. It's not going to work out on every platform. You know, it's something that everybody's tried out. And I guess Facebook is the first one to kind of put its hand up and go, actually, we're stepping back from this. But it's trying to be all things to all people. It's trying to offer so much stuff. And essentially, it's, I would imagine, you know, Meta are are very much involved in looking at kind of VR and all that kind of stuff as well. So you think, well, they've probably only got so many places that they're thinking of investing stuff. And actually, if they feel like they've given audio a, a good go, which I don't know if, you know, running something out over kind of 12 months 
off the back of a pandemic, etc., really is a good stretch. I don't really know. But I don't know. Maybe they know something we don't and they can see something far bigger and better on the horizon that they want to invest in. Uh, I find it really interesting that this the, the comment from the Meta spokesperson that's in this, I'm looking at an article from The Verge, um, it says the changes would simplify the company's audio offerings. Um, but they're, they're actually shelving everything. After a year of learning and iterating on audio first experiences, we've decided to simplify our suite of audio tools. But they're literally shelving sound bites, audio hubs, integrating the live streaming into the, um, the live audio rooms um, feature. They're kind of not really leaving anything unturned. And yeah, people won't be able to upload their podcasts um, after June the 3rd, so in a couple of weeks time. So yeah, it's 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 a head scratcher for me, but maybe all will be revealed in a few months' time. Maybe they know something we don't. Right, that very possible for sure. So we'll keep our eyes out, and hopefully, as we learn anything new, you know, we'll share it here for you all and all things audio. We've got uh, Michael Sterling. Hey, Michael. Hello, and you, this has been oh my gosh, I have so much to say on every topic. Uh, so we just don't have enough time, I know. But like, I was thinking about. Um, Saving your spaces, you could do something as simple as a link tree or some similar uh, thing. Just throw the link to those spaces into it, and that could be your, you know, spaces directory. Um, so, I guess that's where I would start. I'm really disappointed about the Facebook thing and taking down podcasts because I just launched my podcast, and really, people who are on Facebook is sort of my audience, and so I liked the idea that they could be notified about the podcast episodes, listen to them there if they want to. And then, you know, it's a big, sad mm-hmm. trombone. That's not going to happen. So mm-hmm. I'll close my mic there and you, we can pass it along. But uh, thanks a lot for the space. That was a great sound bite. Thank you for doing that. Yeah, we talked about a lot of things today that you probably could do a whole hour talking about uh, with us, Michael, I'm sure. But thank you for joining us. We appreciate you so much. And we got Shida here. I hope I'm saying your Can you tell me how to pronounce your name? I want to make sure I'm saying it right. Hi, Madeline. Sure. Yeah, it's Shada. Shada. Okay. So I'll make sure I get it right. Yeah. Well, thank you for being here with us. And uh, you've got a, a cool tool that you're giving Susan and I access to. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Sure. Yeah. Thank you very much. So um, in the past few months, um, I witnessed that Spaces hosts have like problem with archiving their spaces without a time limit that Twitter has imposed on them. And I have a clean list of all their spaces and also like make more use of the content and the community of the listeners. So um, with my team, we came up with uh, a tiny product that uh, I think might tackle this problem, but I'd love to know what you think, guys. So the product the product is like an automated, always updating list of your spaces, which can be like consumed on the app with a better listener experience and let the host to sustain and reinforce their listeners community with a less no- in a less noisy platform off Twitter, uh, where people have intentionally subscribed to your list to listen to your thing. Plus, we have a feature I know that a lot of hosts uh, who especially have a podcast have problem with is downloading the audio version. So we added it as well. And yeah, I I guess that's uh, the wrap up of the thing. And I'd love to know um, your comments if you have tested it, because I know Hosseline, Michael and you, Madeline, have tested it out. But um, if you can share anything, that would be super great. Yeah, I just haven't had much time. I just, you know, set it up today. I haven't had much time to really go through it. But I like that when I did set it up, it just immediately pulled up all of my recent rooms. I just haven't had a chance to go through it, but I definitely will go through it and spend more time so I can talk about it uh, in the next week or so. And Suze, are you able to do this as well now? Yeah. So um, Shader actually gave me, sent me a link over earlier this afternoon. I haven't had a chance to look yet, but I'm definitely going to be diving into that and, and seeing what it's what it's all about. In case you're listening to it later on the podcast or you're here wondering what the tool is. So uh, you can find the tool, the Twitter archiver tool, Twitter space archiver tool at flowinspaces.com. So, and also I uh, shared uh, a tweet with you, Madeline. So in case you wanted to um, like share it in the nest, you can also like add a tweet as well. Uh, thank you guys. And I see Morgan's coming in to the room to speak. So we'll add him. Hi both. Um, just wanted to add a small bit of context on the Facebook news. Um, 
which is, I guess this is going to be my reading, but I think we could probably take this to be Facebook really focusing on needing to compete with TikTok. And we've seen the change to the Instagram feed to prioritize video and all this sort of stuff. So I think this is probably more a case of Facebook focusing on on the, the existential threat, I suppose. And audio isn't really helping move the needle here with them. So they're doubling down on the other stuff. So it's video and long-term the metaverse. Uh, but another interesting bit that I, I have no information about this, but I also wonder, so you talk about the audio rooms maybe or maybe not appealing to the older demographic on Facebook. Um, so this is one of the questions for social audio generally, I think, is that the demographic studies that I've read and the impression that I get is at the moment, users tend to be slightly older demographics. So it's more generation X than Gen Z. And I think this is probably a question for Facebook too. It's a kind of chicken and egg thing, but you imagine that they they may have seen that the audio rooms were not going to help them with their other major task, which was the younger demographics not using Facebook. So, But I, I'd more phrase that as a, a kind of question generally about how this medium would appeal to younger users. I have no answer to that, but I just think it's a very interesting question. Yeah, for me, I think it's, it's that Snapchat-esque vibe i think that's where different social audio platforms are going and i think that's what i thought their sound bites were potentially going to try and be like a time limited quick snap of audio if you see what i mean oh i guess I, this to me is just a fascinating conversation i'm kind of curious what george would have to say as well because like, i feel i'm putting on my parent hat now i feel like as a parent our generation has not done a good job of training our kids how to have conversations you know, they, they are in the Snapchat immediate five seconds of whatever world. And we, you know, I'm 42 years old, grew up with phone calls. And when I was courting my wife and now ex-wife, you know, we would have conversations that were five or six hours on the phone. And our kids today just don't know how to do that. And so I guess part of our job, our generation's job, however we do it through technology or whatever, is to train our kids how to have conversations again. Yeah, there we go. George, you now have the mic. I would love to hear from you. Yeah, thanks. I think what Michael said is very perceptive. Um, I think a lot of the younger generations do not really know how to talk to each other. And uh, but I think spaces and the like are good places for them to learn. I think we need to do a lot of modeling behavior. We need to literally teach people how do you disagree without being disagreeable, as the saying goes. Uh, how do you have a constructive conversation? Uh, how do you have a respectful disagreement and all that kind of stuff? Uh, it's partly vocabulary. It's partly mindset. It's partly, a lot, it's a lot of things. Um, but they literally have not been taught how to do that. And now they're, you know, they're texting into the void. Uh, you know, texting is not a conversation. And uh, they, they really need to learn how to, how to do this. And I think a lot of the moderators are really being helpful in, in helping them do that, do it. You know, stopping, stopping negative behavior, getting people to rephrase things, <clears throat> cutting people off when they're rambling, all that stuff. Uh, it's a training ground. But I think the older, older people certainly have more conversational abilities than the younger folks. I see it evening out, though. Well, hey, Don. Thank you for joining us. I was going to make a quick point on the search stuff, but um, just to touch on what people have been talking about, um, you know, Michael talking about the conversational stuff of our kids, and and that is true. I've got two of my own, but I think one thing to, to remember is that when we were kids, um, there was nothing else to do but talk on the phone. <laughs> we didn't have the access to the distractions that the kids have today. And so, you know, um, I'm reading a book right now, and, and one of the quotes in there was, you know, people don't have a short attention spans brands have short interesting spans and so they have so many options that they can go to um that it's not that they can't do it it's just that there's so much that they can go to that um they don't have to i guess and that's kind of a just a point to consider but as, as far as the search goes um yeah i've had a couple of the different tabs for the spaces search <clears throat> and neither of them was very effective um and i think that's a big issue with social audio right now is for whatever reason they can they can really nail down algorithms 
for other things, but with searchability, um, they don't seem to be able to serve up to me the things that I want to listen to. And so I just, at some point, I just stopped going to the search tab because it's not very useful. Yeah, and I think you're not alone with that at all. Um, I think that is generally what people are finding. But then if if there are many people that have got the version of the search tab that I've got, it's no wonder people aren't visiting the search tab because it is completely useless. And yeah, I, I also love what you've said there about, you know, con- content overwhelm, I think I'd call it. Like we're bombarded with different stuff and our kids are certainly bombarded with way more than we were. I mean, you know, not to want to date myself too much, but we used to have four TV channels, for goodness sake. Uh, so it's no wonder we were on the phone all the time. Also, the spaces tab is the search is inconsistent. I searched for Dr. J's celebration room today, six ways to Sunday, and I couldn't find it. Had to go back to her timeline. Um, it was, by the way, we, we we should congratulate her. It's her one year anniversary of uh, her space. All the emojis for Dr. J. Well done. Yay. That's awesome. Congrats. Congrats, Dr. J. Hang on a minute. Hoseline's got 100. Hoseline's got... Hang on a minute. What's going on there? Hoseline, how did you get the 100 emoji back? Oh, my gosh. That's just mean. (laughs) There's one more wild card I could throw in at the end here. Do it. Um, I don't know if you've talked about it before. You have to forgive me. Maybe you have. Um, But I only noticed it. It was Steve Moser tweeting at the end of April. Let me see if I can pin it. So this, I mean, if you've talked about it before, <laughs> forgive me, and I'd love to hear the views, but Twitter is thinking of adding a start a space about this tweet option to the retweet button. Oh, I don't think we have covered that before. Show us this tweet, Morgan. Okay, well, it's, it's currently pinned, so hopefully that's worked. It looks like um, that's quite a big deal. Um, it's, it's, it would be an attempt to solve what they call the inventory problem, which is the number of spaces that are started, the supply side uh, of spaces. So effectively, you could, instead of replying to the tweet or quote tweeting it, you would hit the tweet and spin up an in-the-moment space to talk about what that tweet had said i'm guessing that would be kind of the yeah i assume so wow that's interesting and what about what about an option to find other spaces about this tweet that could be interesting too or there are x number of spaces here, that are here. talking about this tweet right yeah. so you could you could imagine that you would have a, a tweet injected into your timeline that it thought you'd be interested in and it could bundle together a space that was already going on about it that you might also want to join. Yeah, that that could be super interesting. Thank you for sharing um, that, Morgan. That's I hadn't spotted that one at all. Yeah, that's really cool. Thank you. I want to hear from Nate. I can see your hand is up. Hello. Welcome to All Things Audio. Hello. Hi, thank Nate. you for having me up. I appreciate that. Uh, first, let me kind of go back to what uh, George and Michael and uh, you have been talking about as far. I, I'm, I'm almost 55. And so I'm in that I'm, I'm in that Facebook generation, for lack of a better term, uh, Gen X. It, there's one thing that today's generation, two things that today's generation have as, as an attribute. And one, that no boy has ever had to fear for their lives trying to get through dad in order to talk to the girl on the phone that they wanted to have a date with. And and so that level of politeness is no longer necessary because they don't have to deal with the generation beforehand anymore. I mean, I, I feared, I literally feared for my life because I wanted, I wanted to talk to a girl at school. She gave me her phone number and I'd have to get through mom or dad in order to be able to talk with that person. I don't know. Nobody ever, ever deals with that fear anymore because you can just talk to them on their own cell phone or what have you. And secondly, the, and, and as somebody else uh, alluded to this earlier was that there is an availability of an expression. You can literally just take out your device out of your pocket and express what you're feeling right now without thinking about the ramifications of how you feel might actually affect somebody else. And that's one problem I think that the, that, uh, the younger generation faces. And that's part of why they don't have the ability to converse because they've never filtered themselves. They've never felt the need. 
you know, we had to wait, like you said, hours before we could make that phone call uh, and then talk five or six hours because we had no other uh, availability of expression. We, we were able to have a conversation because we thought about them during the day and then we had the opportunity to talk with them during the evening. So end of that rant. Uh, but uh, that's, that, was, uh, that was one thing. And if we talk about this Twitter, you know, start a spaces about this tweet. Oh my word, what a great opportunity even to set up your own tweet. Start a tweet, run the tweet, give a headline about what you'd like to talk about, and then start the spaces. I think that's an option. Yeah, I think it's also a good way of canvassing whether or not anyone's interested in talking about that thing. Um, you know, it'd be a good way of finding out is someone going to bite on this tweet, if you see what I mean? Um, or, you know, do we try other other content and um, sort of th- throwing things out there? And yeah, I, I love ev- everything you've said. And, and while there's, you know, quite a an amusing thread to the idea of, you know, picking up the payphone and, and trying to get through the parents to talk to the kids. That's also brought up, there's a whole ton of problems and issues around that as well, um, you know, th- th- that we could definitely discuss at, at great length. And as you say, it all feeds into that, how to have a conversation, th- that kind of social etiquette, um, those kind of things, very, very different when people, when young people have got their own devices and are in control of who they can contact and, and when. And it just changes the way that we communicate with one another. We see a generation communicating in, in such a different way, not only the platforms that they use, but the way in which they talk to one another and communicate with one another. Thank you so much for, for bringing that up. You're very welcome to join us here at All Things Audio today. Yeah, thank you, Nate. I uh, really loved your insights. Host Celine does have the mic. I don't know whether we've got time to hear from him as well. Oh, that's right. That's right. I forgot. I'm so sorry, Host Celine. And he does have the 100%, which I really want to ask him about. <laughs> so jealous. So, yeah. It's just oh, not Celine, fair, is time it? for you to spill it. Tell us what you know. So, I'll focus on I th- this one update I think has to do or is rela- can be related to why you were kicked out. Um, when you started this space, um, they rolled out a, a new feature, um, which I think caused you to get booted out. Um, and you'll have to test this as soon as it's over. Is it okay that I pin something to the nest? Is that? Yeah, go ahead. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. we've been talking about this, um, for a while. Um, I just tested it, um, now, um, but I had to jump into the space. So that's why there was a delay. And then I had to send the tweet, which is a more delay anyway. So there's a new spaces chat feature, which allows you to, um, con- have a s- complimentary discussion via tweet replies that appears at the bottom right of your, um, spaces, um, interface, um, as the host, uh, there is no immediate control. You get a a notification um, that actually, I, 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 I gotta, I gotta check that out. I think I received the notification. I thought I took a screenshot, but when I went through it, I didn't have it. But in any event, um, what happens is when you have that capability of the spaces uh, chat, which is what I'm calling it, um, you have the ability to control who responds. Um, and automatically there's a tweet that is sent out, uh, and the tweet has a notification that indicates that you're the host. Now, this can potentially relate to the uh, tweet that Morgan talked about from uh, Steve uh, when it comes down to um, creating a space on a topic, Um, because you could imagine there could be multiple people that could ha- be interested in starting a space on a particular topic. And then who then is the OG host of that topic, you know? Um, and how could you, cause then that opens up the opportunity of like, can I merge two spaces that are happening at the same time that are on the same topic? That's a whole nother rabbit hole to go down. Um, so I'll, I'll keep this cause I, you know, you guys are running over and I don't want to keep people cause I, I know you guys are succinct with your time. So I'll just talk about the spaces chat feature. So if you have it, you should notice it immediately after the space is over, uh, just start a space as you normally would. Um, and then you're going to notice a new icon at the very bottom. Um, there's still 
So the icons that I see, let me just quickly check um, when I did the space. So we have, you, we still have the voice transformer. That's not going away for whatever rhyme or reason. Uh, we have the, um, what they call the, um, the management of the, um, I forget what they call it, the, the people management section. Then you have the emojis, you have the clips. And instead of uh, having the plus sign, the plus sign is now removed, uh, replaced with the replies section. And replies, um, the number indicates how many replies. And there's two, two tones. Um, one is if it's um, the same color as the background, then there's no replies. And then there's like a, a, a faded out purple color if there's some replies that you haven't read. Um, when you click on it, um, you don't have to read all of them, but when you go back into the space, it, it lets you know that you've, you know, you've looked at the replies in the tweet that I posted in the nest. Um, there's some, I wanted to show how you could limit the responses so you could have it to only the people that you follow. Um, only you could reply and, um, everybody. Now, what would be interesting about that is if you wanted to put additional tweets, I don't know why you would do so. Um, but if you wanted to do a, um, you know, almost like a moment, like you do Madeline, you could probably do something along those lines. I'm going to play around with that feature now that, that it's available. And you've got the hundred percent and you still haven't told me how. Cause he's special. He's, he's like the special beta group. Closing the space, but you know, since we're closing, maybe next. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. that's code for, he cannot spill the beans, but that's okay. Thank you to all of our speakers who came on and uh, shared so much great stuff. And we're available in all of your favorite podcast apps. We're out there, uh, All Things Audio. You can also go to allthingsaudiopodcast.com as well. You certainly can. And you can catch us here on Twitter and use the hashtag allthingsaudio. And we'll pick that up throughout the week. So that's it for this week. But thank you so much to everyone that's been here in the space with us and those of you listening. And we'll catch up with you next week. Bye, everybody. 